Broadway College of Fashion YouTube Sewing Channel. Today is a special day on this channel. We're introducing the Lapras method of drafting basic skirt pattern. This method is simplified and professional. Once you're able to draft your basic skirt pattern, you can use this template to produce any skirt design of your choice and you'll be able to achieve a perfect fit. This Lapras method is based upon three major premises drawn from the analysis of the human body structure. Number one, when we are dividing our hip measurements, we are not supposed to be dividing equally between the front piece and the back piece. The back piece is supposed to be more than the front because that is where you have the buttocks. Number two, the center front length and the center back length are not supposed to be the same thing most times. The back should actually be longer because the back piece will actually raise your skirt pattern at the back, the buttocks. We raise your skirt pattern at the back. Number three, our dart intake is not always one inch. Sometimes our dart intake can be less than one. Sometimes it can be more than one. I'm sure you're interested in this method. So what you need to do is to just stay tuned and keep on watching. <laughs> pattern these are the materials required i need the brown paper upon which i'll be drafting the pattern i need some sets of pens or marker i'll be making use of marker so that it's visible for us all to see then we'll need pencil eraser in case if there's an error for one to clean up i need masking tape to secure my pattern paper in place on the table I need my straight ruler to draw my straight lines as well as my curve rulers to achieve curve ends. Then I need my flexible tape measure to take the measurements. Then the measurement parameters that we'll be working with. And of course, the lapel skirt drafting table that is going to be guiding us to achieving our perfect fit. So the first thing we'll need to do will be to put all this material aside and draft a box within which we'll be drafting the pattern. So the first thing to do will be to secure the drafting paper with the help of our masking tape on the table so that it doesn't move here and there. So having secured my pattern paper on the table with the help of my masking tape, we'll need to draft a box within which we'll be drafting the skirt pattern. So to do the box, I'll start off by drawing a vertical line here at the edge of the paper this way. And since the edge of my drafting paper is not straight, I'll be picking a point from this edge. I'll be using as the edge of my table as guide So I'll be picking an equal distance this way and I'll connect to achieving a perfect straight line. So having drawn this line, I'll use my set square to square across another straight line here as my top line. Having done this, I'll leave it here as my top line, which will invariably be our waist 
line. This line now becomes our center back line. C, D. Now, the next thing I need to do will be to be using the length of my skirt to get the length of the box. And here's the measurement parameters I'm working with. Length is 24, waist is 32, hip is 40. So length 24 is what I'll be making use of from this, my top line, to get the length of my box. And here becomes my hem line. So what I'll do will be to measure length 24 from here, down here. And I'll take that measurement at different points to achieving a perfect straight line as my hem line. So the next thing we'll now be able to do to complete our box will be to get the width of the box. And what will be guiding us will be the, our hip measurement. Hip that we are working with is 40. So I'll go ahead and divide this hip by 2 to give us 20 inches. Then I'll be adding half inch ease allowance plus 0.5 ease allowance. So that gives us 20 0.5 so i'll be measuring 20.5 as the width of the box within which we'll be drafting our skirt pattern so whatever measurement you are working with just divide your hip by two and add half inch ease allowance so i'll connect this point and here becomes our center front line So having completed our box, what we need to do now is to divide this box into two, separating the front piece and the back piece. And at this point, what we need to do will be to check the difference between our actual waist measurement and the hip measurement. Here's the measurement we are working with once again. Waist is 32, hip is 40. So what we'll do will be to subtract our waist from hip. So 40 minus 32 will give us 8 inches. And this is the difference that we are working with. It's this difference now that is guiding us. So we need to get our lapel skirt drafting table and check where this difference falls. And here is my skirt table. The difference in column 1 now. I'm working with 8 inches. This falls in row three and if that's the case my back hip now will be more than my front hip by half an inch and how do i use that this is the back piece this is the center back this is the center front so what we'll do is is the back piece now that is going to be more than the front piece so i'll need to first take the difference which is half inch here i'll take it out from the width of the box so whatever I have left, I'll be dividing it into two. And I'm having 20 inches left because the width of this box is actually 20 and half, 20.5. So having taken half out here, I'll be left with 20. So I'll go ahead and divide into two, which is 10. So what I'll do is from this center front, I'll be using this 10 inches to get my side seam line. So I'll be measuring these 10 inches at different points. Then we'll later connect those points together with a straight line. So this line now becomes our side seam line. SS side seam. So we'll go ahead and check what we have. From this center front to this side seam, I'm having 10 inches for the front piece. While for the back, I'm having 10.5 because of the half inch that we first took out as the difference. So with this, we have been able to successfully make this back piece more than this front piece by a difference of half an inch based on that table. Now, 
The next thing we now need to do is from this our waistline, we'll be coming downwards by five inches as our hip yoke line. They will also come down by eight inches as our upper hip line. They will come down by 10 inches as our lower hip line. So I'll be taking all these measurements at different points. They will connect the points together and draw straight lines. I've gone ahead to draw out all the lines and label appropriately. The hip yoke line now helps us with the positioning of our pockets as well as imputing our grain line when necessary. Then the upper hip line and the lower hip line helps us to eliminate having any sharp point around our hip region. Whatever our actual hip line is or the hip point is will fall in between these 8 inches and 10 inches from the waistline. So this upper hip line and lower hip line will maintain a straight line here. And with that, we will not have any sharp angle around our hip region. So the next thing will be to go and impute our waist measurements and that intake. Waist measurement that we are working with is 32. So we'll go ahead and divide this by 4. And that will give us 8 inches. So from the center back line here, I'll be measuring my waist Imputing my waist measurement, which is 8 inches this way, I'll mark the point. Then I need to impute the dart intake. And to impute my dart intake, I'll need to go back to the skirt table that we are using. Here is my skirt table. Since the difference between the waist and hip measurements we are working with is 8 inches, which is making us to be working with row 3 now. So for the back waist dart intake, I'll go to colon 5. And for the back waist dart intake, I have 1.25, which is 1 and quarter. In colon 4 now, I have my front waist dart intake, which is 1 inch. So when I'm doing the front, I'll be making use of 1 inch as my dart intake. While for the back, I'll be making use of 1.25. Now... Having taken my actual waist measurement, which is 8 inches now for the back, I'll go ahead and add 1 and quarter, 1.25, as my dart waist intake. And I'll connect this point now with my upper hip line this way. I'll go ahead and do the same for the front piece. Taking my waist measuring from the center front towards the side seam. So I measure 8 inches this way. Then the dark intake for the front is 1 inch. Then I'll connect this point as well with the upper hip line this way. So having done this, the next thing will be to be raising this side seam upwards by half an inch. This is in conformity with body structure. So we'll be raising it up by half an inch and following the shaping of the side seam. So I'll just add upwards half inch this way, both on the front and on the back piece. So I'll extend like so. like so now this skirt pattern that we are drafting we are going to be using it as a skirt and also for our gown when we say skirt skirt simply means a waist downward garment in which our lower legs are enclosed together when you're talking about trouser trouser is also a waist downward garment but the lower legs are separated now this skirt pattern will use it to make our actual skirt and also we can use it to fuse it together with our simplified bodies to make our gowns now we are going to be going ahead now to be doing our lowering of the front and likewise of that back and this will help us to differentiate the actual waistline for a skirt and the actual waistline if we are using this skirt pattern to make a gown if you want to fuse it with our bodies to make a gown so having raised up this side seam now for the back piece, at the center back, 
I'll just be coming upwards by cutter, which is 0.25 this way, and I'll blend. So this is how to connect. So let me use a different pen to highlight so that we can differentiate. So I'm using another color, which is red here. So I'll be connecting here. And look at the way I'm connecting it. It's not actually a straight line. It's slightly curved inward. So this is my new waist line for the back piece. Now, for the front piece now, the center front length and the center back length are not supposed to be the same. So for this center front now, I'll be lowering. And by what will I lower? I'll have to go back to my skirt drafting table and checking column 3, which is center front lowering. And since I'm working with this row 3 now, for my center front lowering, I have value of 1 inch. So I'll come to this line, my actual waistline here, and I'll be coming down by one inch to lower. And I'll be connecting this point with the side being raised by half an inch this way. And this will still not be a complete straight line, slightly curved inward. And this will be my waistline for my skirt. And that's why I'm using a different pen to highlight it. So we are using this skirt pattern to make a gown, a dress. You want to fuse it with your bodies. You maintain this straight black line. But you are using it to make skirts from waist downward. We are going to be following these red lines. Now the next thing is to now impute, I mean, position our darts appropriately at their right position. So for the back piece, I'll be measuring the whole value at the new waist line, which should be nine and quarter. Actual waist was eight inches plus the dart intake of one and quarter, 1.25. So I'll be finding the midpoint of the nine and quarter, and that should be four and five eighths. If you are having issue with your division, what you should do is the whole number is 9. You try to divide that into 2 and that should give you 4 and a half. And what you'll be having left to be the quarter, which is actually 2 eighths. So half of it will be 1 eighth. So when you add that to your 4 and a half, it gives you 4 and 5 eighths. And this is the 4 and 5 eighths, which will be the midpoint of our dart. And having gotten that point, I'll do is to draw, place my ruler here at this line. And I'll square downwards. And the length of my dart will actually be 6 inches for the back. So here is my 6. It will be slightly longer than the hip yoke line. Then I'll draw, make it straight down. So I'll be sharing the width of the dart intake now on both sides. And my dart intake for the back is one and quarter. So divided by two will still give me five eighths on either side. And I'll be connecting as my dart legs. So this is the position of my dart for the back piece. So for the front i also measure the whole value at this waistline, which should be 9. Actual waist is 8 plus 1 inch that intake. It will find the midpoint, and that will give us 4 and a half. I'm placing my set square now this way. I'll be drawing a straight line downwards, and the dart intake now will actually be, I mean, the length of the dart will be 5 inches. And this is not going to be entirely straight because this waistline is not totally straight so let me place it this way so it will slant a little so this is my five inches i'll go ahead and I'll share the width of the dart which is one inch i'll be sharing it that's half inch this way half inch on this other side then i'll connect
and these are also extend to this upper line so that if i'm using my pattern for my gown the skirt pattern to make my gown the dart will actually extend upwards this way so this is the position of my dart for the front piece so having done this now we now go ahead now to be putting some fitting lines this pattern as it is is actually good to go the only thing if you are using this for your gown you want to fuse it with your bodies now you can still move the positioning of all this that it can move so that it will conform with that of your bodies especially for the front piece now the fitting lines you now want to impute is not in all cases we are doing a straight skirt sometimes you want to fit it so at this hem line will be imputing our side tightening and at the center back we'll be imputing our center back tightening here and likewise for the waist line here for the center back we'll be putting center back tightening so that we can fuse this easily with our bodies for our center back tightening and to do this i use another pen to highlight so that we can differentiate so at the side seam I'll come in one by one this way and come in one, one on the other side. And I'll connect this point with the lower hip line. Like I said, at this region, we are going to be maintaining a straight line so that we do not have any sharp points around our hip region. So this is the tightening at the side. Then likewise, I'll come inward at the center back line at this hem by one as well. And I'll be connecting it with my lower hip line. Then likewise, at this waist region here for the center back, I'll be coming inward by half an inch. And I'll blend it with the yoke line here as my center back tightening for me to fuse with my bodies easily but it's not in all cases that we make use of this these lines they are dependent on what we are actually trying to cover this is a basic skirt pattern which we can use to fabricate any skirt design of our choice and we can fuse this with our simplified bodies to make our gown as well all of the information needed are already embedded in this skirt pattern please do go over the drafting as many times as possible for you to have a better understanding thank you welcome back and did you find the lapis method of drafting this skirt pattern easy simple or complex I'm sure you have a lot of questions on your mind and certain issues that need to be clarified. So up next shall be the analysis of this method, where I'll be able to explain in details why we did certain things the way we did them in that drafting method. You may also join our Facebook group where we'll have enough opportunity to answer thousands of questions and also meet like minds where you'll be able to rub minds together and we all learn from one another. If you have learned anything on this video, kindly give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because on this channel we upload video weekly and not just any how video, videos that you're going to be learning fundamentals, knowing what is right and doing things right in this fashion or garment industry. Until my next video, thank you for watching. Bye for now. La Perry College of Fashion, raising professionals.